in this video we're going to focus and this is part four of the coin market cap and we're going to focus on the crosshair as you can see here once i move my mouse here the lines will work nicely together and start to move wherever we go so let's start to create this crosshair lines so let's continue on and this is part four now it's time to create the crosshair lines so for this functionality what we need to do here is when we move our mouse we want to make sure that the lines are being drawn exactly on the same location as our mouse cursor so basically left to right and top to bottom so let's start to work on this and again this is part four so if you haven't seen the other parts make sure you watch those first because they're all dependent on each other so I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the crosshair line and that's the one we're going to use and what we're going to do here now is we're going to work on creating the item so we have this here that's already fine so i'm going to put in here enter enter and then what i'm going to say here is we're going to start drawing with the item and to do that we're going to say ctx.begin path to indicate our starting uh, element or starting shape and then of course we can say here a uh, ctx.close path to make sure that it closes off afterwards and then what i'm going to do here so what we need here now is to make sure we have an understanding of how our line will be, uh, how it will look like. Well, in this case, what I will do is I'll just put it here up. And the reason why I'm going to put it up here, because I'll put it in here, this will be for a horizontal line. And later on, we have a vertical line as well. So but what I do want is that the horizontal and the vertical line will have the same colors, the same dashes, etc., etc. So we don't have to write that code twice. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to say here ctx dot line width to indicate the thickness of the line. In this case, it will be one pixel. That is more than enough. Next, I'm going to say here ctx dot stroke style to indicate the color. And I'm going to use here. Uh, we have the other one there. There was, if I'm not mistaken, 102. There was somewhere here. That's all right. What I will do here is I'll just use here the official color of the lines is hashtag triple six. That's another one, but it's slightly darker. So once we have this, the next thing is of course the dotted dashes. So we're going to say here ctx dot set line dash, and then what I'm going to say here is three solid pixels and then three pixels blank. All right, so we have this here. Now we have this. What I want to do here now is start working with the mouse move. We have this mouse move here that we uh, use same here because this is the the uh, movement with the pixel coordinates and what it gets for us so maybe we could do here what i'm going to do is because i'm going to refactor it a little bit let's say constant let's say here um uh, coordinates x equals mouse move it's just to shorten it because apparently i'm using this a lot of times so just to avoid redundancies so i'm going to copy that put it in here so here that's the x all right so that's core x and this should be y offset y the only thing here all right we can put that in there and we can say here will be the y and then here will be the y as well so now we have this and these coordinates can be used again here so what i'm going to do now is we have to look here now what are we going to do here we're going to say here ctx and then I'm going to say here move to and basically what we want to do now is if we, this is the horizontal line so let me put an enter here horizontal line will start from left side all the way to the right side we say move to and then in the move to we're going to say here core x which makes sense and then we have here as well what we need as well is the very top where we're going to start so if it's let me see where we are well this is the horizontal line sorry so if this is a horizontal line we probably could do the following instead of core x i need left and then here core y the reason for this is basically this if i move my mouse here from the left side to there from left to right we're going to draw the line anyway i'm going to show it to you then you understand exactly what i'm talking about this is a move to so then once we have this what i want to do next is the right side as well because we want from here to there so once we have this i'm going to say here ctx dot 
And then what we're going to do here, uh, CTI dot stroke to draw the line. And then here we have that one and the closed path can be afterwards. And we can maybe even remove the closed path, but that's all right. And the reason why is if we do a closed path, it will create sometimes a shape. So we don't want that. And if I draw it first, it will avoid drawing the shape. So maybe we can even comment this out, but let's save that refresh. All right. All right, so nothing happens yet. So let's start to see what we need to do more. So we have this. And then let me double check. All right, so I quickly check what was wrong. My bad. Very, very dangerous if you just copy and paste without looking carefully. So that's what I did here. The move to is basically the starting point. And this move to here is as well a starting point. It's not even preparing to draw the line because this should not be move to, it should be line to, of course. So what I did was just copy this. This one indicates the starting point. That will be whatever left and then depending on our position. So if we have this save refresh, all right, there we are. But you can see here we have an issue. It draws multiple times. Plus, if we hover over an, a tooltip, basically this is one of the tooltips that we hover over. At that moment, it refreshes. So what I need to do is we need to do a few items here, but we're getting there. However, secondly, you can see if I go here at the bottom, that's not what I want as well. So let's start to solve some of these issues here. Uh, let's look at this. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to make sure we have at least the reset of this one. So how do we reset? Well, luckily this is so simple, but so hard to find it, or it's almost impossible to find in the ChartJS documentation. And that is here. So we have this restore. Apparently I just put it in there as well. So we can have this restore here. And then before that, I want to say a chart.update. And then this update here, what happens if you update, it will create all that effect. And I don't want that now because what happens, you will get this infinite loop and it will get a whole headache. So what we need to do here now is we say update, but don't do any effect. So no loops, nothing. Just say here, update and then none. So it will the, the animation is gone. So we save this, refresh, there you are. Now, basically what happens is you're just updating all the time, but you don't notice it. And this is beautiful, so simple, so hard to find. All right, next thing is what I don't want here is look, I'm going down here and just like the cursor, I want to block that. So let's block that one as well. So what we're going to do here is, well, you guessed it, you can use the if statement, but in this case, this is the horizontal line, meaning, we're going to do it only within the horizontal condition here, or sorry, on the Y core. So it is, it is a horizontal line, but the effects are based on the vertical level. So I'm going to say an if statement, if Y core is uh, larger or equal to, to top, basically this one here, I guess we can just copy this entire chunk of code. That's the only one we need to do. All right, then I'm going to cut out this, put it in there. Then we have the close path here. I think this is even redundant or not necessary. But the begin path is essential, by the way. So save, refresh. All right, so let's see now. There we are. And if you're wondering why, let me show you. Save, refresh. So what happened now, as you can see, everything else is being connected. It, it assumes that this is all connected. So this is why we need to make sure we say, Hold on, we have something new, a new element here. Close path, if you would do it, you can close it, that is fine. That's basically neat. So it will not have any connection, but don't do it before the stroke. If you do it before the stroke, it will create a connection as well. Uh, uh, all right, so let's see, did it work? Begin path, close path. Did I save that? All right, make sure we save this, this, here. And with close path, what would happen, it would basically create a rectangle shape. It will close it. But that is not good if you have a dash because maybe it will overlap each other. Let me show you and then we know as well. Save, refresh. So look here. And as you can see here now, we have a dotted line, but our dotted line is being covered now because they, they overlap on each other because of a closing. So it assumes that I need to connect this, the start from here, and then I need to close it. So I connect this again back to its starting point. For um, rectangles, you can use that. I will just use a close path in here. So we don't have any other connection outside. So that's maybe just neat. All right, grab that, put this one here, vertical. Vertical line, same logic, except now we're going with the 
x value and here the x value and it's not top but left and this is not bottom but right and then here we're going to use the x coordinates and here we're going to say this is just now the top because we only have top and bottom so if i save that refresh there we are absolutely phenomenal that looks so beautiful and as you can see if i move up here look at that and if i go there it blocks it absolutely wonderful so now we're done with one of the more advanced parts but of course we're not done yet because we need to have these labels here and labels here down and that will be in the next video